Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm not going to do too much with this today, but I'm just going to tell you I've set these to like this, so they're pretty much identical. We're using the original chips, of course, and the um, Nichicon and Rubicon capacitors. The rest of them have stayed the same using these ceramics. Then we're going to see how we get on. Now I've put both of these onto a single heat sink. I hope it's going to be good enough. I don't intend on driving this particularly hard. If I want louder volumes, I'll use the uh, discrete amplifier I built. That's uh, under my desk over there. Now, putting these on here, I'll just let you know you need to use insulators because you don't need these tabs, which will be electrically conductive to each other um, connecting. So insulate them from this and also use screw insulators. The insulators that sit in the hole there because if your screw goes on and it's connected through on the metal tab, of course it's going to be connected here. And once again, you'll be making an electrical circuit and it will go bang. And you don't want to do that, especially if you're using the original chips because they cost a few pennies. Now, what I do want for this is a sort of preamp, uh, something that we can I can use as a volume control mainly. Now I know that I can set up a, just a part and do it like that, but I wanted a little preamp and I also wanted a little bit of history as well. Now, what I got here, so I'm just gonna pull that back a bit. What I got here, set that out of the way. It's a box that's come to me and it has some parts in here for an amplifier build. And this is a little bit of history for me. This is because where I've gotten this from, or what this is supposed to replicate for me, is a little bit of history. When I was younger, my sister, who's now passed away, had a uh, boyfriend, his name was Gary, and he was a DJ. He was the old style DJ, which meant that when he made his music, um, his remix music and such, because they hadn't really started here in this country particularly that much, then he was one of the I'd say one of the, 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 the vanguard of the DJs doing that sort of thing. And he had a hi-fi system at home. I used to go around and spend a lot of time with him, reading the what hi-fi magazines in actual fact. I loved it all that much. Uh, I had a CB radio and my handle was hi-fi. And uh, I, I'd sit there with him while he was doing his stuff. And oh, that's all that's in there, that's good. So I did a right nasty job on that. And I remember his setup. I remember his setup. He had an Akai reel to reel system, an ANR record deck, a monitor audio floor standing speakers, and a NAD 3020 amplifier. Now, NAD, NAD was a company that came along in 1972, and it had people in there from across Europe and what they wanted to be able to do was because hi-fi was so expensive. Hi-fi was so expensive um, for good stuff. They wanted to do a no bells and whistles, do good quality hi-fi for a price that, you know, the more meeker of us could afford. And that's exactly what they did. And the NAD 3020 amplifier was one of their uh, successes. One of their successes, they had plenty of successes, and that was one of them. And this is a pre-amplifier board, which is supposed to replicate the preamp side of the NAD amplifier. So I'm hoping that I can use this with this, and um, you know, just just see what it's like. Of course, I want to build it in such a way that I can interchange it. I've got a valve or tube preamplifier as well. That's already made up, and I want to be able to just like play around with them and just see what's what. So they may not be going into a casing straight away, but it certainly will be um, something I can just interchange with and play with. And I will be doing the music, the, the sound out of it as well. I'll set it up so we can actually listen to some sound. Uh, yeah, so Nad's. Uh, you know, they came onto the market, they wanted to take on the Giants because all you had was the cheaper stuff coming from China, places like that. And then um, it wasn't very good, but uh, the other stuff, the other expensive stuff was just out of the reach for the common man like myself and like many of others out there. 
And so that's what they did. And they're a successful company, they're a UK company. And, um, I feel quite, uh, feel quite good about building this. I was just going to take a peek at these and see if they're any good. Song. <laughs> no idea. Doesn't feel particularly too crusty. What we got going on here? We got some. Uh, I'm not sure what these are. LZ. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure if they're any good. Oh, these are polymer capacitors. Uh, they're electrolytics, but they're polymers. Uh, what we got here? If you're with Michigan. Nice, Michigan. At least we're starting off in the right sort of area. Uh, we've got the standard connector blocks. Some more polymers. A whole bunch of carbon. Now, I don't know whether I might. Because it's going to be a two-part. This is uh, just taking a peek at this for now. It's going to be a very short video. Uh, what's your man? Is I was talking to somebody the other day about film capacitors and the frequency ranges. I don't think that this is going to be a genuine. Uh, this is based around this op amp, and it's uh, NE5532. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can zoom into it. Oops, I've just knocked out my... Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Well, that's supposed to be in any 5532. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a bit curious. Let's just uh, pick it out of there. That's what it's supposed to be based around anyway. And let me just have a little look here. It doesn't... There you go. Look, 5532. It actually got that there on the up amp part yeah so not sure what's going on there but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because there is a socket and i have got a couple of genuine store-bought rs components and e5532s and that's exactly what i'll be putting on here and uh yeah so this has come from a place called um yixing and they got their shop Details there if anyone's interested, let's go and have a look. And I'm very intrigued by this. I can't wait to actually get going on it. I'm just um, I might wait for a little bit of feedback about these film caps line because even though um yeah, I think it's because they're trying to keep him with the date. Now that feels nice. These components feel nice. Good, thick, strong leads. Even though I just bent it there, but I was putting some pressure on to do that. And uh, that does feel nice. Mm. Of course, these diodes are going to be the standards. I come out with a lot of things. I don't know what we got here. It's, uh, Yep, for anybody. Look at that huh? Yeah, so, uh, oh, and these, look, these little tiny, these little tiny caps as well. A little bit different, I haven't seen any of those before, you know, in, uh, in my hand type thing. All right, and there's another niche you can, I presume. Yep. So, and they're uh, 220 microfarad or 2.2 millifarads. Nice and nice and stout. Look like they mean business, these two. I believe it's a positive negative 15 volt supply. So we've got AC ground AC. I don't have 15 volts to provide to it. I've got 12 volts, and we're going to have to work off that for now. And see where we get with that. We've got a base and treble and volume. Potentiometers, that's what these are for, these are six pin jobbies. And the rest of it here is we've got R out, ground, left out, R in, ground, left in. Nice and easy to set off from there. These are where our little electrolytic polymers go. Didn't even know they had those at the time. That'd be interesting. And you can see where the, the negative sides on those. And, uh, yeah, 
I don't think these are the cheapest. I don't think these parts are the cheapest. They seem to feel quite nice. Um, what I've noticed with, you know, sometimes a lot of these parts is some of these can be quite thin and even though, you know, they're easy, you expect them to be easy to bend, otherwise they could crack the thing. They don't, the actual, the actual um, resistor doesn't look like it's just the cheapest made resistors. They look like they're pretty good, so I will go ahead and I'll put these on and uh, just set it up the way that they've wanted me to. And because we got a socket, like I say, there's a socket here for this. Uh, we can be able to pop that in and I'll be able to swap out this op amp. It's equivalency to <laughs> whatever it, you know, what I've actually asked for was the any 33, uh, 5532. And put a genuine one in there. Let's just see what sort of difference it may or may not make. All right, that's it. This is, uh, this is the first part of the video. I hope you've, uh, you know, enjoyed it and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, see you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching.